Dude, you know what we found in the woods? Not quite in the woods. We found it on the way here. We found a deer. Really? Yep. So it's down at the cabin. How do oh. I know that? I don't know. I think you text. You actually sent me a message. But I, you know what I did is I brought a charcuterie board. That's a big... We're going to fill her up with some charcuterie, aren't we? Piece of charcuterie. What is that, walnut? Yeah. It's a big piece of walnut. Look at that wood. Nice. Isn't that pretty wood? It is very nice. Oh, it's beautiful. So we can cut some uh, meat up on that. We got uh, some woods to stack, and we got some animals to process. Did you start a fire yet? Not yet. You should probably start that first. Well, thing is, we got to get the wood stacked up. It fell over. It was uh, slanted a little bit, so the wind knocked it over. When it dries, it shrinks on one side and falls over. Well, it was tippy. I, I doubt the wind pushed it. Well, maybe not the wind, but it was tippy to begin with, put it that way. So um, it was getting more precarious the, the stackier we got with it. The stackier. The stackier you got. <laughs> the stackier. Anyway. It's a learning curve. It's a learning curve. Stacking wood in the forest. We got Scott here, of course. Subscriber Scott. We got uh, Subscriber Kevin. <laughs> subscriber Kevin? <laughs> I'm just part of the furniture, ain't I? Yeah. Right now, you're pretty much mainstream. We have a big announcement, maybe. We think we're talking about something. Well, maybe we'll announce it in this video. Okay, move those trees out of the way so we can get to work. What do we want to do? I don't know. I thought you wanted to clear the path away. We got we got trees that kind of I don't know if they're from other projects or they fell or something. I think from other projects anyway. So the, the trail here is not cleared for the tractor. That one's attached. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What are you doing? You want us to lift the shikuri board? Is what you want us to do? Well, that thing's beefy. Flexing your wood? I found that on the side of the road. It doesn't get actually. the. It doesn't get the joke. I found that on the side of the road too, actually. But maybe you should lift it. I lifted it out of there. All right. Maybe Scott should lift it. It it's takes a bit. Scott's up for anything. He's just like, okay. What are you guys talking <laughs> about? <laughs> this is navy. <laughs> All right. Light as a feather. Yeah. All right. Go for it, man. Take her down there. And uh, Kevin's got the tractor free now, he can do some work. I forget which season it was, but uh, one of the wilderness living challenges we did out of the cabin, well, the only one we did out of the cabin, we had a bunch of goose, and of course, Bean loves to eat all the remnants that's left. So I raked them all up in a pile of leaves, but now, good chance to burn them because there's mosquitoes. They don't like the smoke so much, so I'll throw it on the fire, burn it off, get rid of all the mosquitoes in this area. They hide in the leaves, so when you walk around, they stir them up. Um, we gotta figure out what to do with this deer. We gotta, we're gonna, we're gonna do something crazy with this deer. Um, we're gonna spit roast the whole freaking thing. It's about 100 pounds, maybe. Uh, there'll maybe be 30, 40 pounds of meat at the very, very most. We're gonna take out the choice bits of it. The tenderloins, we're gonna keep that. Probably keep the back straps. The rest of it, we're gonna spit roast. We don't know what we're gonna find underneath the skin here. There's definitely some damage up in the front shoulder. This is the clean side. Uh, it's got no, no road rash or anything, but on the other side, there's a couple spots where it got hit. The rib cage seems to be fine on this side, more or less. The other side's pretty dinged up. So I think the, the best part, the hams are good. The back strap should be mostly fine. The front shoulder, there's not a lot of meat on there. You could actually cook that thing by lunchtime? <laughs> not by lunch. Yeah. But we have plans to cook other stuff by lunch. Oh yeah? What do you got? Well, we're gonna click the tenderloin, do some kebabs. Once we get it all open up, we're gonna take the tenderloins out, cook them into some kebabs as an appetizer. So like it's a bunch of men in the forest playing with their meat, is that what it is? It doesn't sound as dirty when you play with somebody else's meat. No, wait. <laughs> Take that back. That sounds worse. <laughs> Road meat. Road meat. Yeah, it's been it's been beaten already. All right, who's gonna gut this thing? Not I. Not I. You're not gonna gut it? No, all you. Oh me. Dang it. Uh, okay. Well, yeah. Let's get the gloves on and get dirty. My favorite wood. So we are going to spit roast. We're going to spit roast the deer. A whole deer. I don't know if that's ever been done before. I'm sure it's been done before. I've seen I've seen lambs being done before like that. Uh, deer, I'm not, I'm not sure if anybody's done that. I've certainly never done a gigantic animal like that. I've done I've done a possum, I've done a snake, probably done a few other things in between there. But those are the main big ones. I've never done a big game animal. 
So this is going to be something new for me. You want the saw? Am I cutting this thing? Oh, I don't know. I thought you, you wanted the saw. So this is a, it's a live, live-ish tree. It's one we cut off the trail. So it's not super live. You want to use a live tree because you don't want it to burn. Because if you burn it and it falls down, you're going to have a bunch of charcoal meats. So we want, you're trying to, you're trying to figure out how long we want. We want long, long and heavy. Well, here you go. And we need two extra pieces to uh, make an H. You know what I mean? No, I don't. No? So where to, tell me where to cut it. Well, okay, so if you cut enough, like, pretend the deer is like this, like it got, you know, sp splatch cocked. Splatch -cocked. I think, is that what it's called? Did I get it right? Yeah. I, I finally got it right. So it's called splatch cocking. Splatch cock. Splatch cock? Dang it, I thought I had it. Spatch cock. Spatch cock. Look that up, guys. Spatch cock. So basically what you do is you spread it open and then you split the rib cage so it opens up completely so there's basically two sides you cook on rather than four sides like we're not gonna like turn it or anything like that so we need gonna flip it. we're gonna flip it yes scott's got it so we need we need big enough for a deer's arms cut off at the elbows we've obviously been putting off cutting this deer up <laughs> we're not hesitating it's smart to do it this way because as soon as we open that thing up it's hot it's not it's a summer deer there's gonna be flies on it like crazy. So we have to basically have it ready to go on the fire as soon as we open that cavity up because we don't want flies all over. It's disgusting. Okay, I think we're ready. We got fires going. It's not quite cold yet, but that's okay. It's enough to keep the bugs away. So now, now, we, can, now we can get our hands dirty. Well, we don't have to get our hands dirty because we're prepared. I brought some gloves. I don't know if you guys watched that video, cabin video where my wife gave me some boss gloves because she says I'm the boss. Because I stole her gloves so many times, I actually trained my wife to buy me gloves. <laughs> this is a long-standing story that goes all the way back on the gloves. I stole her gloves. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. We need to get this deer gutted. Did you get your knife, Scott? You gonna help a little bit? You gonna hold it. Actually, that's half the, half the battle, just watching moral support, helping. Disclaimer, I am not a butcher. How I cut out ba the back strap of a deer. There's a line that comes straight down the backbone here. It's, well, the backbone. Then I'll just find the edge of it and just follow it down. And then just work my way along here. It's just kind of like how, you're, how you would flay a fish. Just kind of put the meat away from it and work along it. So we're gonna flay off the back straps uh, so Scott's working with that now. We're going to take the tenderloins out because the tenderloins are going to be good for our skewers, our kebabs. Uh, so we've got some ingredients to go with that. Uh, the backstraps we might have as an appetizer because we could put them on a stick and fry them right away and eat them like a steak. Uh, but if we cook this whole thing, there's no way we're going to eat it. We just don't have a big enough party out here to enjoy this beautiful gift that nature has given us. So Scott's just flaying them off right now. He's going to have a big piece. This is the best part of this whole freaking thing is those backstraps boneless, um, super tender. It's a, it's a muscle the deer uses a fair amount, but not like the leg muscles. Obviously, the, running around all the time on its legs, toughening that meat up. The back strap's like super, super tender. And the other second choice meat is, well, actually the first, 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 first choice meat inside is the tenderloin. So the tenderloin is a muscle group inside the cavity itself. It runs over top of the uh, intestines on top of the back bone. And that's a, that's a muscle that deer rarely uses at all. It's just a muscle that's just there. I don't even know what the heck it does. Maybe you guys do. Post down below if you do. But that muscle is super, super tender. Hence the name, tenderloin. And we're going to use that probably for kebab. So the backstrap is going to be steak, I think. Steak and the inside tenderloin will be for our kebab. That's going to be the best kebab I've ever had in your life. Like, look at this hunk of meat he's pulling off right now. Look at that. Then you can cut it into rounds. And make little medallion steaks out of it. If we had bacon, wrap them in bacon. Oh, it's so good. So the only thing with the back strap would have to be moved is the silver skin on the back. That's a tendon that runs the whole length of it. So you'd fillet that like a fish. So you lay it down flat, just run your knife along it. And just like you're, like you're taking the skin off of a fish. Yeah, so it's like a, th it's a thin, thin layer, but that, you can use that for, that's sinew, basically it's sinew. Yep. You can use that for all sorts of uh, 
bow uh fishing bow arrows and all that good stuff we may we may save this since we have the time today we might actually save that i know jay buddy good good buddy jay valenti who does a lot of my stone tools stone knives he's been looking for that so this might be a gift uh, if you can make it up here it's hard to ship this sort of stuff over over the border you know how strict they are about animal parts and things like that so if he comes up here and we can make some stone tools i think that would be a pretty cool adventure so anyway back straps are going to come off and then we're going to cook the rest of this thing on the spit roast and that's going to be slow cooking because we're all we're all hungry here we need to get we need to get some food in our bellies right now and that's the best way to do it so let's drop these in the the bowl we'll set them aside we got to get this on spit roast too the flies are not bad with the smoke it's good um but we don't want to we don't want it to rot it's just critical temperatures here right now so that is probably what would you say how much weight is that you think what'd you guess 10 pounds there's 10 pounds there's in there 10 pounds straight away all right guys we finally got it all set up so we decided to do something a little bit different than what we expected to do we got it laying on the log pile which actually worked out really well with the hill you can't tell there's a hill but it just sloped upward so with the supports we have at the back, the X, it's actually almost 100% level and even. There was a smaller fire at the start. We've raked those coals back and the rocks back to make it bigger. We wanna make, make it a little bit wider than the animal so it kind of envelopes it. Actually, if I put my hand everywhere here except for over top of the deer itself, it is freaking hot. You wanna go maybe 10 15 seconds so count count one two three it's a little hot it's a little hot i'll admit that so we'll let it die down a little bit otherwise it cooks too fast we don't really care about venison that much it doesn't have to be cooked all the way through in fact it could be rare this is a really good animal to actually cook this way for that reason because something like a pig whatever you're worried about trichinosis or a bear that would be bad because you want to cook that meat all the way through deer you can eat freaking raw like as far as i'm as far as i know we're gonna make some kebabs because we got meat that's ready to go and we got a whole bunch of ingredients, so I think Scott's going to take over now. He's going to cut those up, and uh, I'm hungry. I think Scott's hungry. I know Kevin's hungry, so let's get doing on that. bunch of fat dripping down from down in here. It's a little hot, but you can see it dripping down on there. All right, guys, we're going to get some kebabs together. Kebabs? Did I say that right? Scott's got the kebabs. Look at those. How awesome does that look? I mean, that's from road to riches. What do you got on there? You got onion, green pepper, and tenderloin. Dude, and what are you going to put on there? For, we got some spice, of course. Some wooded beardsman with adobo. I got to catch I gotta catch the stuff that's missing, and then we'll sprinkle the rest on top there. <laughs> there we go. Can't let any of that stuff go to waste. So yeah, I grabbed that on the wittedbeardsman.com website. My mouth is watering with it raw. So we're just gonna throw it on the fire here. I think we're just gonna go from rock to rock. And just get the right balance there. That looks pretty good, man. Is it hot down there? Oh yeah. Yeah, it's gonna cook. Oh, I can hear it cooking. Instant cook, man. That's awesome. Dude, so it's that's gonna good. that's gonna be the appetizer. And then we gotta wait. We're gonna wait for the long haul on the deer. And uh, you know, if we if we go if we go the long stretch, like if this takes six, eight hours, probably ballparking right now, six, eight hours, uh, we might have to eat a meal in between. So we got still the back straps. We'll have some steaks. Just gonna chill out here now and watch it cook. Watch it cook. Let me go for a little walk, check the trail camera. Got trail camera down at the creek. We're making trail down there. So I can uh, show you guys what's been using the trail 
Um, and Kevin's got to jump on here at some point to maybe make his, his teaser announcement. It's not official yet, but it's, it, it, it's getting closer and closer to becoming a reality. So you guys have to stick around and find out. You know, by the time that, time that deer's cooked, see if Kevin takes a bite of it and he wants to share exactly what's going to happen. There we go, there's our kebabs. We're gonna dig in. It's a little hot, but I think it's cooked all the way through, which is the main part. Now you gotta you gotta eat this without touching the actual kebab. So we got gloves. <laughs> We're ready, man. Oh, it's perfectly cooked too. A little bit crunchy, but still all the flavor in there. The meat's perfect. Perfectly cooked. Perfect. It's perfectly cooked. We still have a bunch of hours left on that deer. It's like super, super tender. Like you could break that apart with your hand. It's like no knife required. No knife. It's perfect. It's perfect. It's great. Can't wait for the main course. If nothing else, we've preserved it really well. We'll yeah. be able to cut off pieces of it to eat. I don't know if with the amount of hours we have left in the day, if we'll be able to cook all the way through, but this is how people would have cooked meat a long time ago. You got a whole animal and you got a whole tribe to feed. Throw the whole thing on there, especially with these temperatures. You can see It'd be really hard to protect your meat against other things that want to eat your meat. Did you try tomato yet? Nope. <laughs> that's that, that's going to be lava. Yeah, it's going to be hot. I'm going to burn my mouth. Well, this is a perfect appetizer though. It's pretty firm. It's firm. But I don't know if it's cooked all the way through. Let's have a check. There we go. Actually, that looks good. It does look fairly cooked. That looks really good. Can you see that? Like, that's... Tender, 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 tender. Oh man. Tastes good? It's perfectly cooked. That's good. It's not as tender as a tenderloin. It's not as tender as a tenderloin. But this is as tender as I've been able to make deer ever. Like on the barbecue or anything like that. As a steak. That's really good. Can, I don't know if can it's... Can you taste the smoke through it? I can't taste any of the smokiness. I think, I think it's been kind of sheltered by the sinewy silver skin which is what we wanted anyway yep the idea was to slow cook it all the way through there so i mean look i don't know if you need a knife to even pull that off like that's when you know you've done it right and you can just cut the silver skin like normally you would cut the silver skin before you cooked it at all but the silver skin is actually protecting the meat cutting pieces of meat off of the animal and eating it right there you can imagine Historically, kids, grandparents, everything. We just gathered around when they got hungry, out doing work, come back, grab a piece, eat it, and just savor it. And nothing ever went to waste. Like even this probably would have went into a stew. Um, but once you get into it, the next layer of meat is gonna start cooking. So you're always gonna be cutting off that finished layer. And as I say, you wouldn't wanna do this with a bear or berry meat because of the parasites that are in the meat. So you want it fully cooked, so that would work better as a stew or cut up in small pieces cooked on the rock or something like that. But just to be able to cut, come into the animal and just grab a piece like that, it's not even actually too hot to the touch. It's almost like perfectly smoked. Like that's a beautiful, beautiful piece of meat. Since we have the spice, we're gonna, we're definitely gonna use it. So just a little bit of seasoning. It's one of the things we forgot in the heat of the moment was to put the spice on before we cooked it. Ah, good piece of meat. 
No knife required. Just to get it off. That's awesome. This experiment was a huge success. So you got a big hunk. Yeah. A big hunk of meat. You cut the silver skin off. Look at that. That's perfectly cooked. Oh, it's, this is beyond tender. I can feel it right through it. Actually, I'm gonna try a piece without the spice first. Oh, brave man. Mm. Dude, when you can bite it apart like that without a knife, like you know we did it right. Oh, that is good. All right. Mmm. So good. How much of that could you eat, man? You could eat the whole ham. <laughs> right? I could probably eat that whole ham right now. It is good. It's literally breaking You could just pull it right apart. Crazy. That's not bad. Is that blood? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's juice. Bean, come try this. Bean, you want some? There you go. Try that. Like that. Oh, yeah. Good stuff here. Bean loves it, and she rarely goes after wild food, so we're going to have to save some for her. Pack it up. Obviously, we got a ton of meat left over, but none of this is going to go to waste. We're going to split it right in half. Scott's going to take half of it home. He's going to share it with his tribe. I'm going to take the other half. I'm going to share it with my tribe. I'm glad to have you guys along. You're the big tribe. I really appreciate that you guys support the channel. And if you find something laying on the side of the road, don't hesitate to pick it up, put it on a spit, and just smoke it for hours and hours and hours because this was totally worth it. I'm glad I took the time to do this. If you guys want to see more videos like this, let me know. And you can share it or not, whatever. If you want to, you can. If you really believe in the things that we're doing, I do appreciate it. Talk to you guys later.